everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we're going to talk about dyeing yarn with super sharp fine speckles. Over the years I've shared a number of different yarn speckling videos, and I do have a whole playlist where you can go and check out those videos. But as time goes on, my techniques improve, and so the things that I prefer to do change and evolve, and so we're going to talk about some of that here today. Before we go any further, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Tina Stellhorn. Tina, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dive Out Weekly. What is speckled yarn? It's yarn where you have tiny patches of color. And typically I would define something as a speckle if it would only show up as a portion of a stitch once you're knitting it up. And so, or crocheting or using other applications. So when you zoom out from the finished fabric, you see little flecks of color sort of randomly distributed throughout the yarn. And for different dyers, these could mean a slightly larger splotches of color that are a little bolder, or the super fine speckles uh, that are like the size of a period that we're going to be aiming for today. Pre-orders for the 2023 Spring Mini Skein Mini Series are now available. Starting June 5th, we will have a special event with new yarn dyeing videos every night featuring mini skein sets and even sock blanks. You can pre-order yarn sets that come with 100 grams of yarn, 5 20 gram mini skeins, a lot of fun extras. They're all around a very special to me theme. And there's a lot of add-ons for full skeins and those sock blanks I mentioned. You can find more information in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop and you'll find links down in the video description. Let's go dye some yarn! Today we are going to dye Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. If you would like to learn more about the yarn base, I do have Knit Picks affiliate links down in the video description. To pre-soak our yarn, I'm going to add a splash of white vinegar to this basin of tap water. I didn't bother measuring it. Oh, my basin's a little full. That is okay. Uh, and so we want to pre-soak the yarn for about 30 minutes is what I usually do. It doesn't necessarily need to be that long if you have a yarn base like stroll that soaks up water super fast. Since we're going to be adding speckles, we're not worried about getting a super even color application as we might be if we were doing something more variegated. Um, so you could get away with a much shorter pre-soak, but 30 minutes tends to be safe. Now, the reason why we have acid in our pre-soak here is that we want the dyes that we add to strike to the yarn quickly. So that when we end up with those fine speckles that I've been talking about. There are two key variables when it comes to getting super fine speckles. One, being able to spread out the dye enough on the yarn so you're not adding too much of the dye in one place, resulting in a larger splotch. And then two, having a situation where the dye can strike to the yarn quickly, and so as it dissolves onto the yarn, it's not going to spread very far within that yarn. Right now we're going to focus on the first point and set up to speckle some yarn in two different ways with the same color. I picked silver gray as our dye because it is a more pastel color to start with. Uh, there is less pigment per gram in silver gray than there is in true black, but silver gray will still give us black speckles. It's just because it's a pastel easier to spread out. And so that's one tip that I have. And then the second tip is going to be to mix this dye with citric acid powder. And so for that, I'm going to go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves so we can dilute this dye powder further and then start speckling with both the direct powder and the citric acid mis mixture. Whenever I make my citric acid mixture, I do it by eye. Uh, and well, I don't do that all the time, but I find that if I measure out the citric acid powder and the dye, then I end up making way too much of the mixture. So this works well for me. That still feels like a lot, so I'm going to reduce it, get some of those clumps out. You can break the clumps up with your spoon, so I wouldn't worry about that. So we have about this much. <laughs> and now the key thing is that in general, I try to have a smaller volume of our acid dye than I do of the citric acid powder. So if I take that much gray dye, you can see that there's a lot more citric acid than silver gray dye. 
And now we're gonna stir this up. So you can definitely uh, add more dye than I just did here. I would never go all the way to like a one to one ratio, but it depends on how much you really want to spread things out. Doing this won't change the depth of one speckle. It just, again, will make it, It's more, the dye is even more diluted, uh, so it's going to be easier to spread out onto the yarn. And then I'm going to cover this until we're ready to go. I squeezed out our pre-soaked yarn so that way it was damp but not dripping. And now I'm spreading it out a bit here on the counter so we can apply our speckles. You do need to have water in here so that way the dyes can dissolve and therefore bind to the yarn. And then off to the side here I have what I like to call a yarn mop that I'm going to use throughout the entire video to wipe my hands onto to remove excess dye from my fingers. Now with dry fingertips, I'm going to come into our citric acid mixture that we have here. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of a pinch of the dye. This could be a little bit too much. It depends on how good you are at uh, slowly letting the dye fall out as I rub them together. I'm not opening them because if I have a pinch of dye and I open them, all of that is going to fall in one spot. So I take up the pinch and then come over to the yarn and rub my fingers together while moving my hands to let the dye slowly fall onto the yarn. And you cannot really see it yet. You need to kind of wait for the dye to sort of sink in and get a little bit wet in order to see it. We'll zoom in more on this in a moment. Um, I'm seeing our super fine spread out speckles there. Um, but I want to show on this side of the yarn, speckling with the straight dye powder. And the concept is very similar, but you want to make sure your pinch is even smaller. And again, as you kind of just move your fingers together, letting the dye fall. The acid dye will be less gritty right now. And so uh, as, as it falls, it's easier to have like a clump fall a little bit faster. But now I'm going to wait a minute or two before I come back to show you how these speckles are showing up because I don't know if you can see them right now. <laughs> Here we have some of our citric acid speckles. Look at how sharp these are right now. They are very sharp and very spread out. Because I put so little dye that was already a pastel in with the citric acid powder. If I want these speckles to get heavier, I can do another layer of speckling on top of this and go a little bit heavier, or I can let it be lighter overall. Where I was speckling with the straight silver gray powder, we're also getting some nice, fine, sharp speckles. They're just a lot closer together, and I don't think that I would be able to achieve anything more spread out than this easily with speckling with my fingertips with the straight dye powder without diluting it. But again, the key thing that's helping me here is that I'm using a premixed pastel dye. I continued speckling onto this yarn with the silver gray acid dye on half of the skein using the direct dye powder. And in some cases, maybe I'll get a little bit more exuberant. We'll, we'll see, but it's possible that the dyes might spread more if I add too much because it is a little bit easier to accidentally drop a little bit too much dye in a spot when you're using the straight dye powder than it is when you've mixed it with citric acid. Because with the citric acid dye, if you add a little too much all in one spot, you're much more likely to get a little cluster of speckles versus a larger splotch. Again, you can do this with a more pigmented color to achieve something as spread out as the citric acid speckles with say true black, I would use even less of the true black dye with a lot, much larger volume of the citric acid powder to again, help spread it out. And then, Again, you can do the straight dye powder and get some beautiful and fine speckles with the more intense dye. It's just you're much more likely to end up with chunkier speckles that way. So anyway, I hope that these tips help for achieving some really fine speckles. I try to wait a couple minutes in between adding the dye and flipping the yarn so that way the dyes could start to bind a little bit to the yarn and we're less likely to accidentally wipe it across the counter and smudge the speckles that we're getting. 
Before we go steam set, I want to zoom in one more time. The citric acid speckles overall are still very sharp. There are a few that have a little bit more spread and are a little bigger, but overall they are mostly distinct from one another. The straight powder speckles here are still, many of them are still fairly sharp, but there's a lot more that have spread because some of the little blobs that go down have more powder and then moving it, it just spreads more. And so that's showing a little bit of the contrast. Now I am going to carefully pick up our yarn and go put it in a steamer basket to steam set for 30 minutes. And I'm gonna take the yarn mop I've been using, which is a little bit warm right now, <laughs> and use it to wipe down this extra dye off of the counter. Uh, I use a shower curtain to protect my workspace, and so we might see some staining here, but you know, that, that happens and isn't a huge deal. But we will use this mop for the second example that I will show shortly. It's been 30 minutes, so I'm going to remove the yarn, and here we have the more spread out section that ha was with the powder. And here we have our sharper speckles, but still some with a little bit of spread from the powder mixed with citric acid. The two sides are very, very similar, but we definitely have more splotching when we didn't have the citric acid than when we added that in. Plus, over here we do have some super itty bitty fine specks as well. They're just very spread out because of the proportions I used. There are still some really fine and tiny speckles using just the straight powder, but there are more opportunities for it to spread because, and each time I'm dropping some powder, overall I'm probably adding a bit more. But anyway, I'm gonna let this cool completely so we can wash it. And we're gonna go uh, dye some more yarn. Remember how I said there are two factors to getting sharp speckles? One is spreading out the dye, and then the second is having that dye strike to the yarn quickly? Well, for the second variable, the actual pigment that you're using to dye your yarn does become important. Some dyes will strike to yarn really fast, and other dyes, like say Kelly Green and Fluorescent Fuchsia that I'm using right now, don't strike nearly as fast. And so for those two colors, it would be really hard to achieve sharp speckles uh, without using some kind of citric acid powder to mix with them, and even then, they are likely to spread out more than the other colors that I'm using on this yarn right now. In the past, I definitely had felt that, oh, I messed up somehow when I didn't get sharper speckles when otherwise it had worked, when really I think it was the pigment and the properties of that pigment coming into play. One thing I've never tried is to do this quote, countertop speckles, but on some kind of steam pan, uh, using like a steam insert into one of my longer steam pans, so that way it could still be hot while applying the dye, but not immersed in water. And so that could be a situation that's the best of both worlds between countertop and immersion speckles, because in immersion speckles, you can get more spread and you get a background color because some of the pigment will dissolve and spread. And on the countertop, you can get things sharper, but you don't have the heat, so the colors may not strike quite as fast. But anyway, these are the variables that we are balancing. I only waited a minute or two between flipping the different colors. Fluorescent fuchsia and kelly green are both much more pigment and dyes than the silver gray and the lilac, and so as I was speckling, those colors were showing up a lot more. And the speckles are a little bit denser, even mixed with citric acid powder and using very little amounts of those dye that I mixed just because of the pigmentation of it. But I also know that those are the two colors that are most likely to spread more. So we'll see if this feels very speckly overall or if we'll have some pinkish and blue speckles from the lilac and some uh, black speckles from the gray that feel sharper against a background of more splotches. I'm about to go put the yarn in the steamer basket for 30 minutes, but I wanted to show off some areas, mostly of our more pigmented colors. But you can see a little bit of our black in here as well. Some of the greens from before are already spreading out a little bit, and the lilacs, cold, are looking really pink. We might see more of that once the colors, once we've applied heat and set it. So now into the steamer basket, gently for 30 minutes, we go.
And we're going to bring our yarn mop onto the counter to wipe up this color to leave no dye behind. And then as for the any remaining citric acid powder that we have mixed up, I'm going to save the gray, but some of these other colors, like there's almost none of that lilac left. And then there's very, very little of the green. I mean, I guess it's a lot compared to what we had on here already. I'm likely the same with the pink. I'm gonna sort of spot this on in a few areas before cleaning it up. Just again, to use up as much of this color as we can. And I'm gonna go ahead and steam set this yarn mop uh, for 30 minutes once the dye bath, or once the steamer basket is free. It has been 30 minutes and we still have some pretty good sharp speckles. Yes, there's some spread uh, with the pinks, but I still see a lot of really sharp green ones. And so maybe I need to do these colors and do a side by side with countertop versus immersion speckles because I know for sure that these greens spread out a lot more there. And so, yeah, we've got, there's some splotches for sure, but mostly this is a pretty sharp, we're a little steamy, speckled yarn, but one where you can still see the colors. And I just put our yarn mop into the steamer basket. I think if we wanted to go even sharper, especially for some of those colors that spread more, what we would want to do would be to have hot yarn but remove a lot of the water and then try that. I don't know if that's necessarily worth it though. What I do know is that personally, I like speckles that are about this size. I like being able to see them still when I'm standing above the yarn uh, versus only being able to see them when I'm really, really close. Uh, this way, you know that there's a slightly more impact on the finished yarn and whatever you're gonna make out of it. And that's my personal opinion. Uh, what is your favorite speckling technique? Or if you don't dye yarn yourself and you just watch me do it, uh, which of my speckling techniques do you love the most and would you like to see more of? I think lately I've been enjoying doing a lot of immersion speckles and then doing a contrast between the straight dye powder where we get speckles but they're larger. Things might be one to two stitches. And then using and layering on top of that another color that is mixed with citric acid where the colors are gonna be much sharper. And so then you have that contrast there. So I've been having fun with that, but I'm always curious to know what you wanna see more of here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. So please subscribe, turn on notifications, and well, let's go wash the yarn. We're gonna wash the black, well really gray, speckled yarn first. It was fun doing two kinds of speckles on one yarn um, at with the same color, um, just to highlight the kinds of differences that you can get. And so these speckles, these bigger speckles over here, some of them might make up like a stitch and a half. Uh, some of them might just be like a little speck that's on part of the stitch. And then over here, this, these are gonna be a lot more spread out overall. But I'm not expecting to see any blading here. I'm washing the cooled off yarn in cool tap water uh, with a little bit of clear dish soap. But it's our next yarn that I think is more likely to be a bleeder. So I'm gonna wash out the soap here and then we'll come in with our pink and green yarn. I'm also gonna toss the yarn mop into this rinse bath. So you can see still really fine speckles. There are some more areas of spread and there's like a hint of like a pink halo here and around the, some of these greens, you can see that there is spread, but ultimately we do have a sharp speckle in there surrounded by that halo. And that's the citric acid really helping uh, not only a spread out the dye, but helping some of it just bind where it's been placed. But if this was done with straight dye powder, maybe some of the green sections would take up that same amount of space, but you, it would be more spread like on the yarn mop than discrete little specks that you can see. 
And so the more you dye, the more you'll play around with it. I used to be really focused on getting my speckles as small as I could, but I've realized that I like getting these really small speckles on top of sections of other color. Uh, it's just, you're gonna end up with more white in your yard with a countertop method like this than you would using an immersion method. But anyway, uh, there are a couple colors in here that could be bleeders. <laughs> the fluorescent fuchsia and Kelly Green uh, both could be, but I'm not seeing any color come out, which is great. So I'm going to finish rinsing out the silk, then I'm going to put all of the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll come take a closer look. Here is our gray speckled yarn, where over on the left we use the straight dye powder, and then more towards the right we use that powder mixed with citric acid. Using a premixed pastel, we were able to get some really nice, sharp, well-defined speckles, but there is overall, even with a countertop technique, much more spread because uh, so even when you're trying to get the powders to separate as they fall into the yarn, sometimes you're a little bit heavier. And so then you end up with heavier speckles overall, which are still very beautiful. By diluting the dye a fair amount with citric acid, we were able to spread out the dye further, getting really sharp speckles that have much more space between them. Now, you could mix your acid dyes with the citric acid powder at a ratio that is closer than what I did in this video, using a lot of citric acid and a tiny amount of dye, and that would allow you to get heavier speckles that are still relatively sharp. And we'll show some of that um, a little bit in our next example. But if you really want the speckles to be spread out and have space between them, then use a lot of that citric acid powder. Having the dye be a little bit thicker, um, also because the citric acid crystals are larger, also makes it easier to separate them as you are applying it onto the yarn. For the next colorway, we used four different acid dye colors. We used two that are very pigmented colors and are also colors that don't strike very fast. Fluorescent Fuchsia and Kelly Green. And then we also used more of the Silver Gray, the same one we had used on the first example. And I also took another more pastel color, Lilac, and mixed that with Citric Acid as well. And while it may seem like the Lilac didn't make a huge impact here because I think it is less pigmented, you can see <laughs> those more purple sections. Or sometimes they even might look blue because it is a color that breaks. We were absolutely able to achieve sharp speckles with all of the colors. However, there is definitely some spread around both the pink and the green. You can see sort of behind it a little bit of pastel pink. And then you can also sort of feel that a little bit around the Kelly green. But using the citric acid did help. Uh, I don't know if the acid helps a ton, if that's really important to have that more acidity in that point. But doing this on the countertop without a lot of water there isn't a ton of space for the color to spread out, which is part of what gives you the sharp speckles. If I were to dye with these same four colors mixed with citric acid at the exact same proportions in a low immersion steam pan, with more water there, we would see even more spread of the pink and the green and feel a lot less white in our finished yarn. And that's because even though the heat is going to help with some of the colors striking quickly, the having more water there means that as the dyes dissolve, they have more space to spread. And so it's a hit or miss when it comes to like the sharpness versus spread ratio with the technique that you use. But again, if you talk to, you know, five indie dyers, they're all going to have different preferred techniques of creating sharp speckles. And that's partly because of the types of colorways that they like to dye, but also the types of techniques they prefer to use. Finally, we have our yarn mop. Uh, this has a little bit of all of the colors that we use today. And I guess I had some more of the pink and green left over, which is also why those tend to be a little overrepresented here in this colorway. 
Tina Stellhorn, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope you enjoyed this sharp, speckled yarn video. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Tina, go and check out the listings in the Cabinets Creations Etsy shop. I'll have them linked down below in the video description. Tina, thank you again for being my lab partner. Speckles are so much fun to dye, and I think over the years I've come up with some really great techniques that work really well for me. I do have a whole playlist on dyeing speckled yarn, and you should go and check that out to see a bunch of different techniques, and there's some really good side-by-side -side comparisons. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.